in the fourth and the concluding lecture on method of electrical images today we shall consider two dialectic media media one and media two media one having uh, absolute permittivity epsilon one and that of media two is uh, epsilon two the these two you know, semi-infinite blocks, that is the medium one uh, has infinite extends in this direction as well as in this direction, only that they have a one face, that is the semi-infinite dialectic and there is another similar dialectic which meets al in a plane. We assume that they meet along the J D is equal to zero plane. That is, medium one extends uh, up to zero from J D is equal to zero to plus infinity, and uh, along x y direction it is plus, um, extends it extends up to plus minus infinity. Similarly, medium two extends from Z is equal to zero to minus infinity, and in x y direction it extends up to plus minus infinity. We have a point charge called the inducing ch charge of magnitude Q, which is placed at a distance d apart, d away from the interface, and it is placed in medium one. <coughs> uh, to go further, let me first introduce the coordinate system. We drop a perpendicular from A on the interface and the foot of the perpendicular O is treated as the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system. OA defines the positive Z axis so that the location of the inducing charge Q is 0, D, D0, 0. zero. Uh, if we are in this charge, uh, this charge Q will induce polarization charges in medium 1 as well as in medium 2. Uh, if we want to uh, consider the consider the this induced charges as per the method of images, if you if we are interested in finding out the potential in region 1 that is Z non-negative Z. Uh, then we place a suitable point charge Q1 at a distance G1 from the interface in medium 2. As we are finding out, interested in finding out potential in region 1, the image charge should be in region 2. And for put, finding out the potential in region 2, the image charge should be placed in region 1. It is assumed that this distance is D1, so the coordinate of A1 is minus D100 and then of this. The potential in region 1, the potential in region 1 uh, will be this is due to the um, uh, Q. And the potential of the point is considered to be potential at the point is considered to be I cap X plus J cap Y plus K cap Z for region Z is greater than equal to zero for region one and it is less than equal to zero for media region two or medium two. So this is X square plus Y square plus z minus d whole square to the power half plus it is the potential in region 1 is the superposition of potential due to q at a and q1 at a1 better to replace xy by rho squared. So in that sense it is k1 q by rho square plus
Per K1 is with this and for well, let me also state the restriction Z is non negative. In VG, the potential in region 2 is due to the induced charge Q2 plus T in this. So it is. Epsilon 2 and the region of applicability is z less than or equal to 0. Now, boundary condition is that the boundary condition is phi 1 as z tends to plus infinity goes to 0 phi 2 as z tends to minus infinity goes to 0. This is the first boundary condition. Secondly, phi 1 is except at A, A the location of the inducing charge and phi 2 2 is 0 always. Secondly, the tangential component of E and uh, e, uh, e is continuous. Tangential component is continuous. E1T is equal to E2T at Z is equal to 0. So, so let me write it at Z is equal to 0 is equal to e to t at z is equal to 0. Now we know that uh, <coughs> electric field is obtained from the gradient of corresponding potential. So it will have uh, components in this case the x, y and z component. The tangential component is the component in x, y plane. So the, um, this comes to that phi 1 at x y z is equal to 0 is equal to phi 2 at x y z is equal to 0. Since uh, we differ the tangential component is the tangential component is uh, minus i cap del phi del x minus j cap del phi del y. Since the relation is valid for any values of x, y, the, it is uh, legitimate to consider that the phi itself is continuous across the boundary. And fourthly, the normal component of D is continuous. D1 n at z is equal to 0 is equal to D2 n at z is equal to 0. We know that d is equal to d is equal to epsilon e for a linear medium we assume the dielectric to be linear and then in that case it is minus epsilon grad phi and for normal component it is the normal component is along k so this goes to minus epsilon 1 del phi 1 del z at z is equal to 0 is equal to minus epsilon 2 del phi 2 del z at z is equal to 0. These are the four boundary conditions. Uh, <coughs> You see that this potential as z tends to infinity, this potential indeed goes to 0. The, both the potential phi 1 and phi 2 goes to 0. So these two conditions are satisfied. Now we are to imply, apply these two conditions and get what and see what we get. Um, firstly, we rewrite this equation uh, and we the, 
this is the expression for potential of this and we write it as phi 1 is equal to k 1 q by rho square plus z minus d whole square to the power half plus q prime rho square plus z plus d1 square to the power half this is rho and phi 2 is the potential in region 2 is k2 it is rho q1 this is q2 rho square plus z minus d whole square to the power 3 by or to the power half let me first apply this uh, the third boundary condition that um, third boundary condition is phi phi 1 at z is equal to 0 phi 1 at z is equal to 0 means so phi 1 at z is equal to 0 is equal to phi 2 at z is equal to 0 this gives you that. <coughs> for this we write this is k1 q by rho square plus d square to the power half plus q1 to rho to the d1 square to the power half this is k2 this relation is valid for any values of uh, <coughs> any values of rho and d1 d2 we ex we assume that the point of observation is far away along the interface so we expand it um, oh, sorry uh, we assume that the rho is small in comparison uh, with d1 d2 so we approximate it as k1 q times what we have done we have expanded this one upon rho square by d square to the power half as one upon so we have it, uh, q by d this is q1 by d1 this is q2 by d2 we have taken one by rho common so this is one upon rho times one plus d square um, uh, sorry one upon d so this is rho square plus d square to the power minus half this has been expanded in binomial series one by d times 1 minus rho square plus 2 d square plus higher order terms this is the expansion we have used um, this relation is valid for every values of rho, rho. so it is an identity in rho uh, <coughs> if we consider the coefficient of rho to the power 0 on the left the coefficient of rho to the power 0 this is 
के वन क्यू बाई डी फ्रॉम दिस टर्म फ्रॉम दिस टर्म इट इज के वन रो वन बाई डी वन जुकल टू के टू क्यू टू बाई डी टू दिस इज वन रोलेक्शन एंड इफ वी कंसिडर द कोफिशियंट ऑफ रो स्क्वायर देन इट इज दिस माइनस साइन इज एवरीवेयर एंड टू इज एवरीवेयर सो वी नेगलेक्ट दिस सो दिस इज K Q one by d cube. K Q one by d cube. Here it is d and this d square. K one Q one by d one cube is equal to K two Q two by d two cube. There, these are the two relations. Now we shall apply this relation. So, in order to make this, we change this sign to positive. And you know that there is in phi one there is k one. K one is uh, having one by k one is one upon four by epsilon one when multiplied by epsilon one, it is free from epsilon. So, keeping this in mind. We write the second boundary condition. That is, we differentiate it with respect to z and put z is equal to zero. So let me first do the first term, left hand side. There will there will be no k one. So we need to differentiate it with respect to uh, z only. So this is q. If you differentiate it, it will be three by two. And in the numerator, we will get z minus d. So if we put it, uh, this will be minus d by rho square plus d square to the power three by two. From this term, we will get. Q1 plus d, d1. You know the factor is this. Uh, this is my z is equal to d. Actually, the factor that appears is Q z minus d. If you put z is equal to zero, then this becomes minus d. And in this case, the factor appears z plus d1 with z is equal to zero. It is plus d1. This is the condition. Now, what we do? We ex again as for uh, that. Uh, in this case, we expand the denominator in binomial series and retaining the first term, first order term, first two terms only. Before going that, we should change the sign. That will be helpful. Mm, so. Uh, if you expand it, the denominator there will be d cube, which will be adjusted with this. So the result will be q by d square one minus one minus rho square by three by two rho square d square plus higher order term. Minus q1 by d1 square this is the left hand side contribution of left hand side and from right hand side you will have q2 by d2 square If we equate the coefficient of rho to the power zero from 
this will get q by d square q by d square from this minus q1 by d1 square q1 by d1 square is equal to q2 by d2 square the coefficient of rho to the power 0 gives and coefficient of rho to the power square rho square gives q by d to the power 4 minus q1 to the power d1 to the power 4 is equal to q2 by d to the power 4. There are four unknowns q1 d1 and q2 d2 there are four equations to determine this so one can solve uh, this uh, i am not going to this laborious calculation <coughs> uh, and uh, we get the result as this uh, we get the result is d1 is equal to plus d that is d1 is indeed on the negative side d2 is again plus d it is again on this side so we will have the same distance away um, this and these two will be coincident and the magnitude of the charges are q1 is q1 is equal to minus q the inducing charge k minus capital k minus 1 by k plus 1 where capital k is epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 that is relative permittivity of medium 2 with respect to 1 and q2 is plus q twice k by k plus 1 these are the inducing charge these are the magnitudes of the induced charges and the image charges and the location so we get, with this we can find out the potential the one interesting thing uh, is the surface density of charge due to the polarization so charges will be induced and we know the volume density of charge uh, sorry uh, volume density of charge polarization charge is given by this and the surface density of polarization charge is given by where this is the outward drawn normal so first we want to we need to calculate p polarization vector in region 1 and region 2 let me first do this p how to calculate mm. p1 and p2 into regions we know that d electric displacement vector d is given by epsilon 0 e plus p and for for linear isotropic medium it is epsilon e this is epsilon 0 e plus p and e is given by minus grad of phi so we get p is equal to epsilon minus epsilon 0 times e is equal to minus epsilon epsilon 0 <coughs> grad phi so with this we we know that p1 the polarization in medium 1 is given by minus epsilon 1 epsilon 0 grad of phi 1 and that in medium 2 is given by minus epsilon 2 epsilon 0 grad of phi 2 where phi 1 and phi 2 are given here and the magnitudes of q1 q2 are stated earlier if we want to find out the surface density of polarization charge in medium 1 
so the <coughs> we must consider the outward drawn normal in one should be in this direction which is minus k cap so this is p1 at z is equal to 0 dot minus k cap and this is P2 on the surface dot plus k cap can because the outward drawn normal to this is in this direction. This is n2 cap. And on simplification and manipulation, we get this one to be plus q by 4 pi epsilon. 1 minus epsilon 0 by epsilon 1 2k by k plus 1 a complicated expression d by rho square plus d square to the power 3 by 2 and this will be minus Q upon 4 pi 1 minus epsilon 0 upon epsilon 2 2k upon k plus 1 d square to the power 3 by 2 so if you want to find out net polarization charges, which is the just algebraic sum of these two, and the <coughs> if one wants to find out the uh, volume the distribution, then um, we can first calculate P1 and then calculate its divergence, which is a, which will be a complicated mathematics. So I skip this one and it, it solves the problem. Let me conclude the situation. We have an interface J is equal to zero plane separating two isotropic dielectric, linear isotropic dielectric one and two. A inducing charge Q is placed at A, which is at a distance D away from the interface. Uh, so far as the potential in region one is concerned, the image charge is placed at reg in region two which magnitude is Q1 and it is situated at a distance D1 below the Z axis and we found that the magnitude of D1 is equal to D and the magnitude of Q1 was written. Um, and if we are interested in finding out the potential in region 2 then the image charge of magnitude Q2 has to be placed in medium 1. Again we found that D d2 is equal to d1 so the potential in region 1 is a combination of the charge q at a and q1 at a1 and that for region 2 is the only due to point charge q2 in region 2 so the to proceed further we use the tangential component tangential continuity of the tangential component of h across the surface that leads to phi 1 and z is equal to 0 is equal to phi 2 at z is equal to 0 and um, the normal component of d since there is no free charges and the interface they are the two dielectrics so there is no free charges so normal component of d is continuous across the boundary and we get another condition involving uh, derivative del phi 1 del z is equal to del phi 2 del z with x multiplied by epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. Mm. We, we had a, uh, a four unknowns to be determined, four unknowns means q1, q2, d1, d2 and we formulated four equations which enables me us to find out four unknowns and so ultimately we you assume the linear dielectric and converted the p relation to be this and finally we find out the polarization charge densities at the interface one and two 
Finally, the total charge polarization charge density is sigma p1 plus sigma p2. By this, we conclude our discussion on the method of electrical images. Uh, uh, <coughs>